In this episode, I'll be working on the back splat and spindles. One of the approaches to doing the back splats is to use a form to laminate the pieces together in order to get the curve. This is kind of a gentle curve, so we didn't really need that. We actually put together a laminated back splat on our prototype chair, decided it was a lot of work and a lot of mess and um, really a little bit difficult. It came out okay, but doing it one piece, one solid piece of wood came out better for us. I was able to get two back splats out of each thickness of boards by stacking them one on top of the other and then cutting them out between on the bandsaw. I've already got my back splats cut out of my wood. I've got them shaped with about a half an inch thick from top to bottom. The curve on the bottom is a little bit more straight up and curves back further at the top so that it follows the curve of my legs. I've put in a vertical line the same distance in from the edge of each of my boards so that as I move from one board to the next, I'll be using the same um, part of the grain of the board for each of the back splat sections. I've also marked in where my inlays will go, my crossbars on the back splat center. And here we have our prototype chair where I've got the cutouts already done for the back splat. So you can see how those are laid out and what I'm after in my finished product for the back splats as I create those. I'll be cutting the pockets for the inlays before I actually cut the shape of the back splat. This helps me prevent any tear out that might happen as I'm uh, cutting these out. I did get a little bit of tear out on the prototype. I'm not as concerned about that. This edge will get rounded over anyway, but I'd rather not risk it. So by cutting these um, inlay pockets first, I can avoid that tear out. And when I go with the bandsaw to cut this V in, I'll be just fine. We've made a template for doing those inlay pieces. Uh, this would be the template for doing the pockets of the inlays, each of them with a bar. I have my back splat set on a supporting board that I cut away originally, the back side of it, so that when I cut through, I'm going to be doing a plunge all the way through first on the center to make sure that when I go to the other side that those um, pockets are going to line up perfectly from front to back. I've got a gap in between in the center where the two ebony bars are going to have to meet in the middle and I want to make sure that those are correctly lined up from top to bottom without just looking at my template guide here. And now that I have the holes drilled into the center of each of these all the way through, I'll be able to register that on the back side and ensure that my template is lined up correctly when I go to the back side. Um, and the next step would be to route out the depth of each of these pockets to hold the front side ebony plugs as they go in. When I go to do the back side, I'm going to be using these other cutoff parts from the facing side to help support my clamping process. These just kind of cradle my piece in place. One of the important things on laying my template on my back splat itself is to ensure that my uh, bars are going to go horizontal 
and not be slightly angled off. So I have some lines for reference that I square up with the side of my board a couple places just to make sure everything is truly square with my board. That looks really good. So this top hole is lined up all the way through and I don't have any side to side motion in there so if I can line this up in that hole I'll know I have a good match. And the depth of the holes on the back side is the same as on the front side. I'm going just four millimeters in and that's set by this. go so this process will be repeated with all the rest of the boards this roughness will come out when I uh, clean up the holes and this is just for the center back splat the next step with the back splats is to put the tenons on the bottom ends in order to do that I'm going to use the panna router to begin with I've got the panna router guide set on the very bottom with uh, just using the uh, pointed end following along in the track and that's so that I can get a straight line across on my board that I now have clamped down. So I've got it set to clean away about a 1 8 inch shoulder on each side of the boards. By raising the height of the panda router, the height of my bit, which is 3 eighths, double that, is 3 quarters of an inch, plus the quarter of an inch, double the quarter of an inch that I want for my tenon, which would be a half an inch. That gives me a change of one and a quarter inches. My original height was set at about 3 quarters of an inch plus a 32nd from here. So if I make it two inches and a 32nd, I'm going to give it just a little bit of extra about a 64th more rather have my tenons tight and be able to shave some away so when the router bit comes in at that height I'm actually be going to be going backwards against the piece um, looking at the bottom of where the bit comes in that'll leave me a quarter of an inch tenon The next step is over here on the bandsaw. I'm going to be cutting away the center piece here, the split in the center back splat, and then we'll cut out the rest of the shape, the sides, and the uh, shaping of the center back splat. Continuing with the work on the back splats, I've got them shaped out of the main board. I've put the tenons on the bottom. I've put in the bar pockets on both the front and the back side. I've put the slit up the center. Then I cut out the pieces. So I've got all of my sides. They're all marked with which piece goes with which chair. In order to make the squared up ends, I'm going to be using these square hole punches. The 3 16 is a little bit smaller than my smallest size on the bar as I go down to a quarter of an inch. But I've got a, a square chisel mortiser that I'm going to be using. It's not one that I'll use in um, a machine because I do tap on the end. But that'll fit into the 5 16 slot. I also have a quarter inch square hole punch that I'll be using in these smaller, the top two or quarter of an inch. Using the cutoff piece from the original shaping of the boards as a support, I can tap these into place. Quarter inch.
I also want to ensure that each of the outside edges of these is equidistant on either side. So I'll be using my square just to make note of where those edges come. So that's the distance that I want to meet is right at the edge of my square. And then I'll clean these out with a chisel afterwards. I need to cut a gap in each of my pockets for the ebony bars in order to allow those to join in the center. So without the additional supporting material in there, I have a really good chance of breakout happening and tearing out the center of this. To prevent that, I'm just going to go in with a, a coping saw and clean that up a bit. Other side. Okay, so now when I go to knock these out, I won't get the tear out, they'll just pop right out for me. The next step with the back splats is to clean up these outside edges and get them nicely rounded over both on the back splat and on the two splines that go up either side. So for that, I've already got it roughed out with the bandsaw. I have my spoke shave set on a very light cut. Need to look at the grain here. Occasionally I'm going to get some backwards grain. The advantage of this is that I can go on either side and even it out. Um, and with a smooth stroke, I can see almost like a plane where um, I'm missing things and I need to, to even it out a bit. On the first light pass, you can kind of see where it's a little bit darker that, and uh, how uneven that actually is. Of spots up here where it's not perfectly smooth. Got some backwards grain working in here, causing chatter. Again, it's just light, very light cuts that I'm trying to do here. And you can also feel where there's like there's a little high spot here. Your fingers are actually quite sensitive. I'm gonna take a card to it. And the round over shaping comes next because the top end is mortised into um, a round over of about a quarter of an inch round over. That's going to be a lighter round over up here. Down on the bottom, this is not housed mortise. Um, the bottom is just the tenon is in the mortise, but this rests firmly against the um, bottom rail. So there it can be a heavier curve and just a light cut. With a card scraper, I can actually get these edge is quite smooth, almost better than sanding.
Now I'll take the piece over to my bench and sand out the inside edges of the V group. Starting with a 50 grit. Now moving on to a 120 grit. I found that using this uh, foam backed 120 grit helps hold the paper together really well so that I can get into that crack without tearing the paper too badly. 